Hello everyone, welcome back to the number one least trusted name in technology in history. Now continuing on with the Swy train, I wanted to talk about a phone that I've hit on pretty extensively on this channel I've talked a lot about, and that phone is the LG G6. Now, funny enough, I used to own not this phone, but the LG G2. First of all, I've owned every LG G phone, but the LG G2 was a phone that I used for about a year and a half straight, and it was one of the first like real smartphones that I used, and I really loved it. It was awesome. Awesome. I owned the Nexus 4 right before that, but the G2 was awesome. I had a great experience with it until it boot looped and then started crashing on me. But the LG G6 was super interesting because it was kind of like one of those last phones that LG made that started or stopped boot looping. So I never really had a boot loop problem like that on the G6. I've had that on the G5, G4, phones like that before, but... Overall, it's kind of funny. Every time I make a video about the LG G6, there seems to be a lot of buzz around it. Not like buzz, like making news or getting millions of views, not like that, but like people are super interested still in this phone. And I've always wondered why. I, I think it has a lot to do with maybe this phone still being sold in other markets just outside of the United States. Maybe I think I went to like the T-Mobile store, AT&T store the other day, and I think I might've seen one there. Probably not. I could have just been seeing things, but I'm sure in outer markets outside of the United States, I'm sure people are still selling these in like stores and stuff, so maybe that's why. But the LG G6 came out in 2017 in February, so it'll actually be turning, it's over two years old at this point. It'll actually be turning three years in a couple months. And looking around the phone, you know what's funny about this is that I was just thinking about myself when I was using it. Like looking around this device, you can tell like it still, you know, has a lot of bezel around it. But just a few years ago, this phone was like the one of the most bezel-less phones we had in the market. In 2017, this phone was released right before the Galaxy S8. And we were really comparing this to like the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and like the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. And I think the Note 5 at, was out at the time, somewhere near there. And those phones had quite a bit of bezel, but this one, following all of LG's, you know, bezel is somewhat bezel-less design. This one was kind of in that same rate, which was awesome. And now we're looking at it and we're like, man, this thing has a lot of bezel on it. But it's funny how we just look at things nowadays. But in terms of the way it feels and the way it looks, it definitely doesn't look like a horrible phone. You have a 5.7 inch IPS panel up front. It's a 1440p panel, which is very, very good. The LG G3 had a 1440p panel, the G4, G5. All those phones had 1440p panels. And this one kept that same trend going, which is awesome. And I'll definitely tell you, this is one of the better panels I've seen on an IPS panel in a long time. I will tell you though is that I don't know what it is about it. I think the color coloration or the color profile they have on it just really isn't too great. It seems like the colors are super like cool on it, which I like a warmer color sometimes, cool color sometimes too, but this one seems too cool for my eyes. You do have some apparently some really nice audio coming out from this phone as well, which is cool. On the top, you have a headphone jack, which is awesome. On the bottom, you have a single USB Type-C port, which I'm glad they have a USB Type-C on this. You also have a micro SD card slot on this phone as well, which is awesome. Very, very cool. On the back, you have LG's fingerprint sensor on the back, which is really nice. And you have a dual camera setup, which, you know, kind of looking at where we're at now with the iPhone 11 dual camera setup, this one has a dual camera setup as well. And when I talk about the camera, I got to tell you something super interesting about it. But overall, like it doesn't feel like a cheap phone at all. You know, even though it's almost three years old, I'm pretty sure the back, I can't tell if it's plastic or what. I'm pretty sure it's glass, but it kind of gives off a vibe that it is a kind of plastic in a way, but I'm pretty sure it's glass. I, I'm not too sure, but overall, very premium feeling phone. The aluminum chassis feels really nice too. It doesn't feel like a cheap phone. The screen up front kind of feels a little weird too, but it's not that bad. So overall, what I can tell you is a pretty premium feeling phone still, you know, just the bezel that might be the only thing that bothers a lot of people, That, but that shouldn't even bother you because it's not that big of a deal, but that pretty much covers it up in terms of the outside. Now, in terms of the inside, okay, this is where things get a little weird. So it started off with Android 7.0. I was able to go and upgrade to Android Oreo, but for some reason, I cannot go beyond Android Oreo. I have no idea why. I've been trying to do this for like three hours now, if you can hear my phone. I've been trying to go and update it, but it started off with Android 7.0. Like I said, I've been trying all day to get it to upgrade to Android Pie, but I cannot do it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If I do figure it out, then hopefully the video that I show you or whatever improves it. But so I'm pretty sure it's ending on Android Pie or whatever it is. I'm pretty sure it's not going any further than that. But what I will tell you is, is that without a doubt, there's still quite a bit of third party development behind the scenes. So you can always root this phone and custom ROM it. I think there might be an Android 10 ROM out for this thing. I could be mistaken, but without a doubt, there's still going to be quite a bit of development about this phone so in terms of software you're pretty much done for there's not it's not getting any more software support but you might get security updates here and there but overall i think it had a pretty decent run but you can always go and root it in custom ROM and be set there so that pretty much covers it up in terms of software but i will tell you kind of getting into the nitty gritty i don't like their lg ux whatever it's called i hate their user interface i used to like it like back on the g2 or g uh, back on the g3 it was super nice 
But now it's just like so weird. It's like, I don't know what they're doing with it. It's like touch whiz, but even worse than touch whiz. I don't know. Before I used to like it, but now I don't really like it that much anymore. So I don't know what they did with it. It just seems like it's so glitchy. And I feel like it's just overdoing a lot of what Android is kind of not wanting you to do. Like so many weird animations. And it just feels like it, even though the phone doesn't feel cheap, the software feels really cheap in my opinion. But that's enough of digging into the software. Let's go ahead and talk about the performance. Now this thing came with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chipset, a quad core CPU, an Adreno 530 GPU, and 4 gigabytes of RAM on all the models. There were 3 different models for this thing, a 32, 64, and 128 gigabyte model, but all those models had 4 gigabytes of RAM, and what I can tell you in terms of performance is honestly not as good as I thought it was going to be. I don't really know what happened because the last time I used this phone, it did not feel like it was like really, really bad in performing, you know, when I was doing things, but now it just kind of seems that way. For smaller apps, like when I was doing like Temple Run or whatever, it was going perfectly fine. I couldn't really notice that big of a difference or that big of a problem for me, so I kind of just like believed it. I was like, okay, it's probably not that bad. But then when I started going to the more intensive route, like doing Real Racing 3 or something, that's when things started getting extremely weird for me. Like it was so glitchy and I don't know what the problem was. I think before, back when I used it, I think 2018 or early 2018, whatever, when I reviewed it, it was perfectly fine. I think Real Racing 3 was running perfectly fine. I didn't have too many issues with it. But now it was just like super slow and laggy. So I don't know what's going on there. If you use it for basic tasks, I think you're going to be okay. Opening apps, you know, doing minor things. Like I said, whenever I was going through the web browser or something, it was fine. Like I didn't have too many issues with it. But when I was going to the more intensive things, that's when things started getting a little weird. So not a humongous deal. You know, I'm sure you can get over it. It probably won't affect a lot of people, but for me, I couldn't really see myself using a device like this with this type of performance every single day, and my use case is super slow, but I need something that's pretty consistent. So in terms of performance, I think it's okay. I think it's probably like a 6 out of 10. I wouldn't really depend on this thing too much in terms of performance. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of backlash for it, but to each their own. I'm sure there's people who own the G6 who are perfectly fine with it, but... That's my opinion. That's my take on it. Moving on to the cameras though. This is where I literally like this phone a lot. So 13 megapixel dual camera setup on the back, optical image stabilization on that main one. But that second lens is an ultra wide sensor. And what I can tell you is, and you can shoot 4K videos on it and everything like that. And what I can tell you is for some reason, this phone has like the most ultra wide camera I've ever seen on any smartphone. Okay. This thing is like, I think it's more than the S10, more than the 11 Pro. I was shocked when I was messing with it. Like this ultra wide sensor is super, like you can get super far into it. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just seeing things, but dude, this camera lens, the camera quality is all right. Like it's nothing like too crazy in my opinion. It's, it, it, it gets a job done for sure. But the back camera on ultra wide mode, it's, it has to be more than the iPhone 11 Pro, I think. It's pretty intense, but the overall camera lens, the camera quality isn't bad. Like I think it's all right. If you're doing whatever on it, I'm sure you can get really good quality video or photo out of it. Of course, with that audio quality, I'm pretty sure this phone had problems with the microphone, but I'm not too sure. But I think you'll be perfectly fine in terms of the camera. So front camera is 5 megapixels. You can do 1080p videos on it. And overall, I think the camera quality is a thumbs up for me, especially with that ultra wide sensor. That's super impressive. Now moving on to the battery life. So this thing had a 3300 million power battery and it's not a bad size battery without a doubt, but there was something about this phone. And I remember back when I owned this phone like a year and a half ago, the battery drain was just, it was just draining all the time. And I'm not too sure why that happened. But when I was just leaving my phone here, I kind of started seeing the screen turn on randomly all the time. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it has like a hand waving gesture, totally joking, but maybe it just thinks I'm picking it up or I'm double tapping the screen or something. But this screen would just randomly turn on all the time, but this screen would ran randomly turn on all the time. And maybe that has something to do with the battery life. Maybe it doesn't, but I've seen this phone kind of go down in standby time quite a bit. So not a humongous deal. I'm sure a lot of you guys won't even care, but that is something that I would probably look into if I own this phone as a main device. But I think battery life is very, very modest. I think it's very okay. It'll probably get you throughout the day, but this phone is, you know, has a strange chipset, has a pretty high resolution screen at that. So I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's okay battery life at that. So. And that pretty much covers up everything I wanted to hit on. Now, like I said, some really, really cool things about the LG G6. IP68 dust and water resistance, so you can go up to one and a half meters of water for 30 minutes. A somewhat bezel-less design, kind of. I know it wasn't going for bezel-less, but at the time in 2017, this was pretty bezel-less. Micro SD card slot, you can go up to one terabyte in this thing, which is awesome. You have the fingerprint sensor on the back, which is cool. USB Type-C, and what I can tell you is, I think this is still a pretty decent pickup for the money. You can probably pick one up for like $60 or $70, man. LG phones just do not hold 
double their price. They go down to depreciation so much. It's crazy. And you know what? It's a really good build quality. You can definitely pick one up for like way less than a hundred. And if you need a phone for the time being, or if you want to, you know, root it and custom ROM it, be my guest. I would, I would highly recommend it in my opinion, but it wouldn't be my first choice to recommend. I would really recommend like a Galaxy S8 over this thing. You can probably pick one up for maybe like $50, a hundred dollars more, but that phone, Definitely has more bang for its buck, in my opinion, than the G6, but this phone is still super cheap as well. So that pretty much covers it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. I'll find the cheapest LG G6 on Amazon. I'll link it down in the description so you guys can get it from there. But hit that like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So to me so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.